And five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kevin Stage. She's that chick angel. Welcome to another podcast episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Bangers, bangers, bangers. All 2023. Bangers, bangers, bangers. Just for you and me. Yeah. Welcome back. The kids are back in school. Well, not back in school. I mean, me and Angel and Josh are back in the office. Although we were back in the office for the bonus episode. But anyway, church announcements real quick. The ball, I mean, the, the ball, ball brothers, brothers tour. Woo, woo, woo. I made a video this morning. As of right now, Philadelphia has zero tickets. New York, 85 tickets. DC, zero. Charlotte, 87. Atlanta, zero. Cleveland, 478. Oh, Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland oh, does not perfect. rock. We'll never go back. <laughs> Chicago, 86. New Orleans, 151. Phoenix, 266. Dallas, 387. Berlin and Paris, there's as many Funko Pops on these desks as tickets sold. This is Berlin. <laughs> that is Paris. Oh, that's gonna be London great. is doing great. And listen, even like uh, Phoenix, New Orleans, and Dallas, that's not bad. 150 tickets, 266 tickets for a show that's over a month away. Yeah, that's really good. We I've sold seven, 800 tickets in the week of a show. Come on. I just did that in Louisville. Like, so to have this many left in the only aberration... The only aberration, on. Cleveland with 478. And also Dallas, 387 tickets is misleading left because it's already 1,200 tickets sold. Wow. So Congratulations, the venue, Kevin. Yeah, the venue C15 Honda. So, so, so proud. Dallas is great. And listen, Cleveland, look, guys, <laughs> listen. It'll be it'll be a while because uh, listen, Cleveland has never done well in my history. Never done like oh, Cleveland's out to the oh yeah yeah yeah. We we might sell out seventy eight percent, but it sticks out like a sore thumb. Oh man! So uh, it's a chicken salad. We well, said chicken uh, salad. <laughs> when y'all going to Atlanta? Atlanta is August nineteenth. Okay, and I'm staying over a couple of days to shoot. Some other uh, on, podcast with the blacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you have, Angel? Do you have a music video debut? I did, but we're going to save that last. Let me let me go through the order. Go go in order, Angel. Is this going to cause an argument tour? We come into Houston. It's already sold out. We might actually get a bigger venue. So if we do, I'll let y'all know last minute. So sorry. Then we will be going to Chicago on the uh, what is that? The tenth. New York on the twelfth. And it looks like we might be in ATL on the 13th. We had taken of that Atlanta? off. Mm -hmm. of August? Of August. We had taken it off because the promoter at the club didn't want to hit us back. So we just found another venue. So my Patreon, I'll let y'all know specifically when because those tickets will go fast. Yeah. Now, in other stories, I have God. one of the hottest music videos. Watch it. Of the year. Oh, you gotta go ahead. On the YouTube oh, currently. YouTube. Currently it is. It's the remix of One Margarita. Oh, it's yeah. the Saucy remix featuring Saucy Santana. But we couldn't just stop there. No, you can't. We couldn't just stop there. We went over to the TikTok. Who'd you get? And we got my, my boy Keylon, aka Terry Joe. Very funny. Up in the building. And then we couldn't stop there because this is a multi-generational thing. You understand me? You understand me? We went <laughs> and got the legend, the icon, the standard, Miss Cindy Mother Crawford. Don't I bleep it, Angel! Listen, you say it. You fill in this time. <laughs> <laughs> It'll still be bleep. Um... Yo, that experience was amazing. Cindy Crawford is the classiest, most down-to-earth celebrity I have probably ever met before in my life. Then why did you body bump her? out of? Was that a stunt double or was that really her? That was her. And you really body bumped her? Bumped the hell out of her. And this is what was crazy. I was just doing like a little like, boop. She was like, no, Angel, I need you to really slam into me so I have something to react to. And I was like, oh, All right, now. I said, Cindy. And I just still did that. She was like, no, harder. Now, now I'm like, Cindy, I got about 90, 95 pounds. Got about on 95 on you, baby girl. Okay. <laughs> and I bumped her real. She said, yeah, that's, that's, that's really? what I need. That's what I need. Because I was so nervous. Because I was like, if I hurt the Cindy Crawford on this set, I'm burning this whole thing down. 
Because this was not my idea. Shout out to Jake Wilson. He was the director and the creative vision behind the entire video, all the way down to the puppet, the marionette doll mm -hmm. at the very end. His brain is a circus. And uh, yeah, it's that video is fire. There's so many things that you catch. Of course, Mama Dorothy's in there. Mama Dorothy made it! Peter K! Yeah, come on. She's like the original OG rapper, okay? <laughs> she was in there introducing herself to the Casamigos people, <laughs> to the Blend Jet folk. And then all of a sudden, I'm back there changing into my next wardrobe. I was styled by Dallas the Stylist. You can follow him on Instagram as well. I'll come back out. Now, he's the director. Okay, so Dorothy, we're going to have you in this seat. And then I was like, wait, first of all, why do you know my mama's name? And second of all, why does she have action? Why does she, why have, does she have stage direction? <laughs> yes. I said, oh, she's in the V. Okay. Uh, the dude from Blackish, who was one of Anthony Anderson's co workers on Blackish, yep. he was in there, had a great cameo. I don't remember the young lady's name that he was with, but it was fire. It was it was a great experience. Felt like a superstar. There is a line dance that goes along with the song. I'm going to do a TikTok video to teach y'all how to do it because it's super cute. Because I had background dancers and a choreographer named Cash. Where are my background dancers? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <Lord. laughs> It was great. It was a great experience. It was a dream come true. It'd be crazy when you realize the Lord even hears your quiet prayers. Hey, say it again. Okay. Would you pray for a white woman to help you? <laughs> I just, you know, <laughs> listen, I said, Lord, if you could get a white woman who has a mole that's a signature. Uh, no, it's more so just like, these are the things that I always dreamt of being able to do. But you give, a, you like realize the chances are slim. <laughs> and God was like, not on my watch. It ain't nothing slim. <laughs> so yeah, it was Fantastic. Please watch it. Share it. And again, the margarita song is not over. The fact that you have the Cindy Crawford. I mean, that's America's white woman. Mm -hmm. That was my white love. Everybody. I don't, As a little black child, I seen that Pepsi commercial and they said, this is beauty, Negro boy. I said, I appreciate it. And she was my white love until the fateful day that my young eyes were introduced to Holly Berry. And Cindy then I did what you did. White love. No, she was out. My, my <laughs> Holly Berry's whiteness took over oh, my you white said love. That, that half that she got. Holly Berry I'll take it. body checked Cindy Crawford the way you did, <laughs> and she never got back in. But there was a couple summers because she was drinking that Pepsi the, the way she drank that. That's what margarita. the whole was, and she said that she got so much backlash from that Pepsi commercial. Really? That was considered like too sensual for TV back in the day drinking that pepsi the way she did yeah she was like it was she was like i had sponsors that were like i mean this is a lot are you kidding me and so she said sometimes you can't play it safe that's what she told me look at cindy crawford dropping jewels oh cindy Even crawford, cindy crawford. Dropping, dropping bars on me did you get her number cindy crawford knows you can't please everybody listen that commercial was in 1991 come well, on i wasn't even born joshua wow that's why that's why you're older than harry kane that's why you're older than Harry Kane. And there's people in the NBA who are younger than you. Stop it. LeBron's your age. Oh, my. Ah! Don't do that. I didn't. Cindy Crawford, it, I'm watching the Pepsi commercial. This opening looks exactly like it. That's why I felt so familiar. Yes. You just now getting it? That was a white woman, boy. When I, She is fully has full on shorts and the tank top. Yeah. She wore full jeans and ours. She's like, listen. I can't guys. do it again, y'all. <laughs> she looks and still looks great. Cindy can still get it. I, listen. Listen. <laughs> Cindy still look good. Obviously, yes. Back in the 80s, they were like, white is the only thing that's pretty. But <laughs> that was what they were doing in the 80s. But Cindy was one of those that was just, she was just pretty. It yeah, didn't matter. She was. was just pretty. And she still is. And just so, she flew herself out. Oh, she Painful. don't live here? She does, but she was out of town. She was in Toronto. She was in Canada. Toronto? Toronto, Toronto Canada. Toronto. On vacation. Toronto. She Toronto. flew herself out. Flew herself out. Paid for her own glam. Pay for her own glam? To be in my music video. She's had some margaritas then. What? That is unusual. L listen. Yeah, people go like, oh, y'all got budget. Y'all got Cindy. No, we did not have budget for Cindy. Thankfully, Cindy got the budget. Cindy said, boy, ain't nothing to me. I helped the Negroes. Been doing it since 91. Wow. Period. Also, I want to just say this. I don't know if Angel can or can't, but them why he Tays was in them comments. Oh, they were so mad. Don't you touch our beloved Cindy. They were mad. Why did you, why did you push her, you black woman? They were so mad. You really pushed her and hurt her. Why would you hurt Cindy Crawford? Dude, I, I don't like.
like that. The push was unnecessary. Our, our whiteness, Daenerys, my liege. I said, do y'all think Cindy Crawford was unaware she was getting pushed? They, they really think. Do you that, think like, that Cindy Crawford was just like, I'm going to drink this? Oh, yeah. My but, damsel in distress. You think that that wasn't yes. cleared and there wasn't a little mattress on this the other is side? What I, you know, I realized, thank God I realized this before now. People are unwell. People are very unwell, and I am not going to be their doctor, okay? <laughs> I'm not. They just going to have to be sick. They're going to have to be sick and tired because, yes, and people are like, oh, that must have been a body double. No, I. I, I thought it was body double. No, I hip checked the sh out of Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> and she gave me permission to. There was somebody there to catch her yeah. so that she didn't hit the ground. And I was like, please. I was literally know. looking like, man, the editor on this is crazy. Like, how did they? No, I didn't see the camera switch. And then I said, they ain't no way Angel really did it. And I text Angel like, did you? Because I went to comment. That's how I knew the whites were mad. I went to comment. Mm. And the comments were limited. And I was like, that must wait limited. And then I seen the white people, they had torches. They were, they like, were like, get the black yeah. woman. She touched Cindy that Crawford. That big black <laughs> baboon touched her white Princess Peach, how dare she? You know, <laughs> I, you know, I'm gonna let them be mad because that video gonna Listen, run up. Keep commentary it. is engagement. Come on, I'm, I'm like, watch it not. again. See how hard I hit her. See if it's too, too solid much. work, Angel. Thank you. The LA Kings are looking for somebody. Listen, because that was a clear, perfect hip check. Oh yeah, it was solid, and you you were there. She went. Because they wanted to do a wider shot, which was going to have me slide in and hit her. And I was like, I can't control it if you have me do it. I will just really throw <laughs> will, my body at gonna, her. It's going to be that. Uh, do you remember the office linebacker commercials where he kept tackling yes, people? He was like, yes, woo! Yes, it yes, gonna, yes, yes. It was going to be That's that. That's exactly. I said, uh-uh. Y'all got to bring in, the, bring in the framing so that I don't have to travel as far because I don't want to hurt this woman because I will. Yeah. I'll hurt her. But anyways, thank y'all for Terry watching. Tate. That's his name. Thank y'all for watching. Keep watching it. Again, One Margarita is not over. Um, we got some interviews, I think, coming out. There's one coming out today on ET. So uh, watch that. It's crazy. Isn't this crazy? It's, uh, listen, I was just, when I was driving into this place where we're at today. Yes, uh -huh, the office. I was like, man, this, because it's August 1st now. Yeah. And man. I was like, we shot this podcast, that podcast in May, I believe. Yeah, end of May. I would have never thought that freestyle would lead to all of it. A, a hip checked Cindy Crawford, the butterfly effect from from <laughs> sister Cin, sister, sister Cindy, Cindy led to Cindy. Yes, all said, that bullshit. Oh, you just yeah. I said that hey! in the interview. I said, come on, we we got the Cindys all around us. Listen, I got a I got a song for you, Angel. Give it to me. This I heard this this morning, and it just this is what God is this is what God is doing for you in your life. <laughs> Ooh, this good church, Angel. Yeah! Come on and do it. Ooh, this song got good to me. I gotta go back to church. I gotta when I'm off tour. I gotta go and get. I gotta pull my love with you. I gotta show them that I love them. This song is originally by Judah Band, but this version, this little praise break version is by uh, LBD Ministries. Mm -hmm. So Judah Band version is is um, a different break. song. It's just a quieter version. Uh -huh. And this is... Come anyway, on and say. Let's just listen, do the ad now so, before we go in the car. Yeah, well, I was, I was getting ready was that you? to transition. I literally, okay. I literally Did I mess it up? Sing, I say no bit, but it's okay. Okay, whether you... you it's fine. You know what? Are, you gonna, are I, we going to do it now? No, I... I 
I have a lot of things that I have to do, okay? I've been doing this one margarita song. I'm on tour, and then I still got four kids. I was so late to this podcast today because I couldn't find my four-year-old's water shoes. <laughs> These are the things that I still have to worry about on a day-to-day basis. And let me tell you, uh, I be needing to de-stress, okay? And CBD is the tool that I use to de-stress. But I don't settle for any CBD products. A recent study showed that most CBD labels are way off, and some products only contain 60% of what they claim. Melatonin products can be very inaccurate as well. So I actually really do love Next Evo Naturals. <laughs> I promise you, I was in the meeting with the record label and I was talking to the guy over social media and he was saying he had problems sleeping. And I was like, oh, you need to try Next Evo. And I said, this sounds like a on podcast ad. But I was like, no, for real, though, I love Next Evo. He ended up buying it right there with the code. And let me tell you, the reason why I, I recommend it for sleep is that my husband also has sleep problems. And Next Evo is his favorite thing to use we've tried everything melatonin teas all this other stuff next evo is the only thing we found to work and for me me using their um their de-stressor um it's called their uh stress cbd complex gummies i feel like it is just a easy way to integrate into my life and um it reduces stress up to 70 percent. no prescription needed uh, Next Evo tests their products multiple times to ensure you get 100% of what's on the label. They do their research as demonstrated by four clinical trials. No other CBD, excuse me, no other CBD brand comes close. And their triple action CBD sleep calms your mind with fast absorbing CBD. Then both fast acting, fast acting and control release melatonin help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. Leave summer stress behind and upgrade your CBD. Go to nextevo.com slash SK to get 25% off plus a free bottle of pure premium CBD. $50 value, limited one use per customer. Mm. That's N-E-X-T-E-V-O dot com slash SK. SK. According to an independent randomized study by Coral Reef Labs, a Pennsylvania state approved in iOS accredited cannabis test. Testing laboratory. Mm. All right. Cardi B strikes back is the title of this episode. Yes. Because Bell Collis Almanzar. I love her whole name. Oh, it's a great name. Mm -hmm. She was accosted in Las Vegas by a water throwing patron, not a patron from Kevin State Studio. Not a patron, but a patron. A patron threw water at her. First of all, I didn't know Cardi B was left handed. Just never clicked. Cardi played baseball because they need. A League of Their Own remake <laughs> she could when be Cardi B, Cardi B threw a 95 mile per hour microphone, microphone. slider. Oh, yeah. Back door. Cardi B Puerto Rican? Uh, I don't know. I, she she Dominican? Dominican? I'm, I don't know. I think she Dominican. She Dominican? I think she Dominican. Stage crew, faithful members. What, what is what is Cardi B? She's, she's, she's Afro-Latina. I know that. Yeah. She like, I'm black too. Oh, she's Dominican and Trini. See, that was that Dominican. See, that's why I said I. The left handed pitcher, the Dominican, they be in that baseball. Yes, they do. They be playing that baseball. And that Dominican was in here. Cardi B need a trial for the Yankees. She could do it. She and tossed, she would look cute in the little in the pants. That booty <laughs> up in the pants. I don't know if she could run though. It she don't need to. When she throw heat like that, 95 miles oh. per hour, straight down the seam. They said you all you doing is pitching. And somebody put together a string. She threw the shoe at the girl, the love and hip hop mm. reunion. Mm -hmm. She threw the chancla, Josh's culture, threw the chancla mm -hmm. with the left and the offset video with um this most recent offset video. Jealous. Jealous. She threw the, the sandal again, mm -hmm. hit offset. Also, she licked his jeans. It was kind of weird. Yeah, she's I get the sexual sensualness of it, but jeans is a terrible fabric to lick. Mm -hmm. And I know what my mind is just like. <laughs> just denim. <laughs> it's like it's too rough. And of you all the get to lick, on your I get it. The peen was behind it, like me next. But the jeans. <laughs> <laughs> me next, please. The jeans getting oh. licked was wild. So here's the craziest thing about the Cardi B. Tell me. I seen three videos. I seen uh -huh. the other ones. I was I waiting. Seen the other angle. Angle. You gotta quiet. talk about the entire the thing. whole quiet. thing. I said, "Unsolved me." Where's the unsolved mysteries music? Uh -huh. Cue me up. Give me. Let me. Let me get my unsolved. Side note: the the other video that I saw um, was on Buzzfeed's self proclaimed TikTok attorney, and I got a qualm with them. Is that the black dude with the mm -hmm. the hair? Drives me crazy, but I respect him. So let's get the let's get the unsolved mystery. 
Sources say Come on. that before this fateful incident, oh. Come on. Cardi B actually asked for fans to throw water at her. And they did. On a region, however. She said, throw it they, on my puss, they, not she on did. my face. Right. And she allowed fans to throw water on her. However, the black woman in question was late. <laughs> Very. And apparently, she didn't follow instructions. Video surveillance shows that after she threw the water, she was immediately remorseful. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Her face was terrified. Terrified. She had already been hit with the microphone now. She hadn't. So, the woman beside her was. Wait. I no, thought no, no, it no. hit her and no, then the bounced other, off. The other angle showed that it hit the uh, the girls. It hit the intended target first. Oh. That was the third video. And then the bounce off hit the person next to her. But the black woman, she ate the microphone. <laughs> but was she wrong? Or was she following instructions? Was she late? Or did she misplace her water? Find out next time on Unsolved Mysteries. If you have any information. <laughs> you are dumb. That will let us know about the whereabouts the of, the, <laughs> of the black women. So now, apparently, the streets is saying, I saw allegedly uh -huh. Cardi B is now a suspect in, an, uh, in, in a battery charge. From throwing the mic. From throwing that mic. I don't know if it's because she hit the woman or the, the, the ricochet hit the other woman. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that she had asked to be thrown water. Yeah, I found that out as I was, as it kept coming up in my feed. And I was like, oh, because it did, see, it seemed like so weird. Like, well, obviously people have been throwing stuff at folks. This has been the summer of throwing shit. Throw stuff. That's and why I'm like, the I'm fans like, have been connecting. You talk about, <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, the girl who got the stitches, I am going to be back. Bini Rexa? Yeah. yeah. I'm not coming out on the walkway where you end up in the middle of the crowd. I'm standing back. Y'all just going to have to listen to me. Y'all ain't going to be able to see me that well. Cause I'm, I don't want to be hit by nothing. I'm gonna perform in them balls that the American gladiators used to be in. <laughs> I'm gonna be in a cage. I don't want it. Okay, so then when I heard she was like throw throw water on my uh, on me, it's like not everybody has as good of aim as you, Cardi. That's what you're assuming that everybody else here is Dominican. Everybody else here has practiced at throwing things. Cause I can tell you right now, if it was me throwing, I don't know. I'm gonna short circuit the whole thing, ma'am. You just threw it at the outlet. I was aiming for Cardi's. Pussy, I just <laughs> don't have good aim. <laughs> I, I don't understand why. Listen, I'm sure Cardi wasn't thinking, oh, people are going to throw it in my face if people enjoy me. But after especially seeing that girl being like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> She looked like she was finna get whooped. Yeah, that's exactly. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. I did not, I did not mean to do. I did not mean to do it, Mama Cardi. I did not. I did not. We can't be giving these people license to do anything but Just, listen and groove. Listen, I want to know how she, like, why did she throw it late? Did she get the information late? Somebody was like, man, we was just throwing water at her. She's like, what? Oh, we can throw water? She's let like, me. no, no, no. And she was like. <laughs> she said. <laughs> no. And Cardi's reaction to her was crazy quick. Yeah. She was like, I said, that's my butt. <laughs> And it was a line drive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There was no. There was no arc to that throw. Yo, I mean, she. It was like she had just finished axe throwing somewhere because the Man. way that the way that Thor ham, hammer <laughs> hit that hit that person. I said, I just and I, that's again. I wouldn't be able to react like that as a star because I know I'm not going to hit the person intended. You gonna hit somebody a mile behind them? Oh yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, it's, it's going to be behind me. <laughs> I'm going to hit one of the band members. Uh, sorry, Gerald. <laughs> that bitch threw water at me. Uh, yeah, ain't no way. So do you think Cardi was wrong now that she, because she asked? Do you think she opened herself up to what happened? Because at first sight, it seemed like like we were, like you were saying, a first long, uh, another long line yeah. of people throwing stuff. But Yes and no. You, you're you able to set boundaries on what people are allowed to do. Mm. Like, just because she you get... throw water at me, okay, no more. Yeah, you're able to give someone an inch and not be like, well, if you give them an inch, they'll take a foot. No, if I give you an inch, you get a goddamn on inch. And if you take more, there I'll are throw repercussions. A at you. Yeah, there are repercussions. However, because we don't know people and we don't know people's intentions, 
I would, me personally, me personally, I would not feel comfortable giving people anything. No. And ever. Never. It's like when you let people talk to you from the audience. Yes. And they don't know that their time is now up. Oh, did I tell you what happened in Louisville? You don't tell me anything, Kevin. Mm, it's true. Angel. <laughs> You're an international rap superstar now. Whatever. No, whatever, whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever. There was a, we were in Louisville performing. Uh-huh. And I don't do crowd work in my Yeah, sets. you typically don't. I just do my jokes. Mm-hmm. You paid to hear me laugh. I don't be doing much crowd work, period. And I, nothing against crowd work. That's just not a part of comedy I do. Yeah, I have yeah. a, a set that I plan. I do. I'll do improv based on my set. But I don't be like, what y'all doing here? Yeah, 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 That's yeah. just not has been a thing I do. In the middle of my set in Louisville, for no reason, I don't invite audience participation. Like, what y'all? I don't be doing, like, too much of that. Dude just starts yelling out, roast the audience. R- roast the audience. So first I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just ignore him. He won't. He won't. He will stop. Kev, ro- <laughs> roast the audience like roast me. I was like, no, man. Then he said, why not? First of all, I don't want to. Second of all, why are you talking to me like it's just just me and you in here? The audience, there was a lot of black women in the front. Their their turnaround face at him was like. Yes. I said, now they want to roast you. And I couldn't see who the person was because the club was so dark. And uh, somebody said, nah, you called him a nigga. Did I? That does sound like something I would do. I was about to say, why you make it seem like that? I don't remember calling him a nigga. You don't remember saying nigga. Oh, yeah. I I said, no, nigga, I don't want to. I definitely said that. (laughs) Uh, No, it was a black dude. uh, I don't know. I feel like he had locks. But anyway, after the show, he went up to Tahir and was like, did I really, uh, did Kev really, did I mess him up? And Tahir was like, yeah, man, we don't roast the audience. I said, I I don't roast people who pay money to see me. Nothing against people who do. That's not my, nothing about my comedy says I'm going to do that. Yeah, I don't. I don't do crowd work. I wish I did. Why do you wish you did? Boy, the TikTok crowd work people who do crowd oh, work. Stupid. Nate Jackson and Matt Rife done blown up. Matt's doing theaters now. Matt Rife is on tour. This is no hyperbole. That's the white boy. That white man. From now until Christmas of next year, sold out. From here to Scotland, dates in October 2024 are sold out now. Wow. Nate Jackson blown up. Please believe if I had the skill, I would have Josh and three cams. One on me and Josh talked about it, but mm. I don't do it. Ain't going to be as funny as theirs. Mm. I do the stuff that I know. And if I do that, then everybody would see my jokes. You talking about Seattle, Nate Jackson, Seattle, Nate Jackson has I been selling out, doing a out show. all over the place because he's in both of them. Also now here's the difference. Both of them also are good comedians outside of crowd work. Uh-huh. So they can do, and a lot of people don't do both he equally as well. He called tour the sold out tour. Matt? Yeah. I don't know. That is diabolical. Yeah. He's like, might, he might be. Speaking it to exist. Yeah, then. but don't get me wrong. I'm I'm not belittling crowd work comedians. People who are good at crowd work, it's perfect for short form content. Yeah. Right? And Nate and uh, Matt are both good at it, but they also are good at actual prepared material. Yeah. Andrew Schultz is really good at crowd work and good at material. Mm-hmm. Even Akash. But me, Kevin? I'd be like, where are you from? Hold on, Matt's, Matt has a problematic world tour? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not yeah. slightly, fully. Yeah, what he listen. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so people would talk. Why, okay, so giving them an inch. The same thing, you know, in, I think Kentucky might just have a problem. I did a couple of shows <laughs> with... Um, with my friend, uh, oh my God, my brain just blanked. He, Your friend? He, used to, he had a stutter. Andrew Lynch? Mm. Drew Lynch. Drew Lynch. Thank yeah. you. I was like, I'm missing it. And the people, it would piss me off every night. There would be people who would just keep continually to try to have a conversation with him. Yes. And I'd be like, why do you think that people drove and paid their money to hear your voice? That people, I know people pay sixty five dollars not to. They don't want to hear you. I they want to see that person. Him. They want every single joke he has inside <laughs> of his body for this show, and you are eating that time up. Yeah. Now I will tell you, <clears throat> I did Jeremiah Bullfrog. 
the the improvised show. Stand up. Yeah. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I was much better at it than I thought. But you know what I realized about crowd work? What I don't like it. I like to be in control. I was about, I thought you knew that. No. Because I'm I not think, aware of myself. Oh, okay. I think. Well, I think you're a phenomenal stand up. Your off the cuff stuff, way funnier. Than That's me. why we should do on the Unruly Cousins tour, and then. We can shoot it and we can 80, let me tell you what, 85 South boys, y'all done messed up. Y'all done set a blueprint. I'll copy it to the T. The I only have difference. Been, that what I've been saying is I said no, I want to do what I've the never 85 heard South. It. I've never heard you say anything like that. When it's my idea, it's my idea. Yep, it I is. don't care if you said it first. Right. Now get back in the kitchen. <laughs> I will with Cindy Crawford. But no, I We're didn't, going on tour. Yeah. It's me and Cindy. <laughs> no, don't. Go with me. <laughs> but uh but doing Jeremiah's thing, I realized, oh, I'm not nearly as bad as I thought I would be. Oh, yeah, no. But you know how I, I be control. I feel like you only this is the only issue with off the cuff because we get the pleasure of your off the cuff is off camera as well. Yeah. It's how quickly can your filter come in? I don't know. Because when I'm is, with y'all, that, <laughs> that's pure unadulterated care. Yeah. Amongst my friends? Yeah, you are. That's how I get Melissa to laugh. Yeah, you are insane. And when I'm, y'all, my friend, my brother, my ruly cousin, Kevin, you all do get a great version of him. You you also get a lot of his low hanging fruit, the stuff that's easy that he knows. Oh, yeah. I know where Just the joke hush. is. Hush! Close the curtain to the. <laughs> told you to get Listen, out from behind there Listen. the wizard of oz is working leave it alone Listen, but when i tell you y'all don't really get the level to his comedic ability because of control kevin wants to be able to to have and i think it's smart have a very good control over his branding over what kevin on stage is to his audience and it makes it him a well-oiled machine however comma <laughs> if this nigga would ever just like give y'all a little peek, some of y'all would run screaming and be like, I can't believe. But others would I, be I like. I think the people who watch this show, uh huh, Patreon and non, these people I feel like could take it. I don't know if the world, the people who watch this program, yeah, r- like regularly, yeah, they could take it. Yeah, it's not because even- I think this version. Of me is the most close to my actual, actual personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you watch this show, they'd be like, man, Kev done said some stuff. <laughs> or people have come see me do stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right? I feel like this show has opened the door for what your stand up is evolving to be. I think there's still some OGs. Correct. There's still some OGs that go to the shows that don't watch the no, show. No, the, the stand up version I am now is the actual version I started with. What happened was the Playmakers came. Ah. So we put, oh, Take that oh, off. Okay. Church, church, church. Oh, okay. But if you saw me in Tacoma in 2011. You, you weren't as church boy. Well, I didn't do. Ch- I did. I would end with church stuff like I do now. But uh-huh. whatever I thought was funny was funny. And because I know there was no church people in the audience, I didn't even have to do none of that ah, stuff. I okay. did a joke, for example, <laughs> original cab. I said, the people who eat it, who, and I, it, it killed that night. I just never went back to it. I only said it one time. Uh huh. And this was a random thought I had on the way to the club. I said, the first people who ate butt, human butt, Mm -hmm. probably like chitlins. Because if you can withstand the smell of chitlins. Of dookie. Then you prop, then the human butt isn't that much of a jump. But people who don't like chitlins have a harder adjustment period to actual butt. Mm -hmm. Because the butts, butts stink. And people thought, and I said, a little hot sauce, a little hot sauce. Maybe they didn't, maybe they took the hot sauce off. That transition, probably not that great. It killed. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I just, but that was just, I could, that's Your why I'm so appreciative to Nate Jackson. <laughs> Whatever I thought was funny that day, I was like, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see it. And Let's people see was dying. But then the Playmakers blew up. We built a church version of our YouTube stuff. A lot of, uh, a lot of the original Playmakers jokes were jokes that I had done the first time I did stand up. And we ran that for years until Real Comedians. And the first time I got closely back to my self-self was slightly problematic. Mm. That was as close to my original Kev okay. comedy. And that's why people were like, I don't even know this. who is this man Kev. Well, listen, I don't know. I, I feel like hopefully I set the atmosphere because I was up here cussing and saying nasty stuff before you got there. <laughs> and uh, But, yeah, I I think... I don't know why you would think you would be bad at audience work. 
obviously it gets, you know, you get more comfortable the more you do it. Yeah. But I think, like you said, the control. The control. The control. It's hard to control what's going to come out your mouth it if you really don't plan is. it. It, it really, really is. is. It really is. Now, listen, I have been, we're going to go back. We're going to talk about me, okay? Okay, let's talk about you. I have had some uh, moments here lately where I've been having to, like, really tap into what I'm feeling and thinking, especially as I'm introduced to a new audience and I'm introduced to new perspectives and some perspectives that I don't really care to hear and having to figure out how I want to respond and how I want to address those feelings has been um, a part of my life now here recently. And I don't know if I would be able to be as productive and helpful to myself if it wasn't for my therapist. Um, now, do you ever think of seeing a therapist or a psychi psychiatrist would be helpful uh, and you don't actually have the time to actually find one or meet one or afford them? I suggest you try talk space. OK, um, by doing everything online, which is how I uh, communicate with my therapist, Talkspace has made getting the help you need, you want easy, accessible, and affordable. When you've met your therapy goals or simply want to cancel, Talkspace has a simple cancellation process and will work with you to get a prorated refund for unused times, if applicable. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get personal, personalized, matched with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line update child care in order to act attend sessions it's mental health care made easy talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist so you don't have to wait for your next session therapy can help you shift your perspective find tools to cope in difficult times and be a guiding light as a listener to this podcast you get 80 dollars off your first month with talkspace when you go to talkspace.com slash crew with a k crew with a k -E. to match with a licensed therapist today Go to Talkspace.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. To get $80 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. Okay. Do you have a summer anthem? And Well, I do. It's called Give Me One Margarita. However, how does this one sound? Summertime and building credit is easy. Yeah. You so talented, it. Angel. So it. talented. <laughs> That's the song you could be singing all summer long with the Secure Chime Credit Builder Visa Card, Visa Credit Card, a better way to build credit. Listen, I want to tell you some of the amazing features that the Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card has. No annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply. Use it everywhere Visa Credit Cards are accepted. Build credit using your own money. Get paid up to two days earlier. With a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Fee-free overdraft with SpotMe. Overdraft up to $200 without fees with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit. Sign up for Spot Me, and Chime will spot you up. Uh, spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. Ditch the monthly fees. Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. Access sixty thousand plus fee free ATMs. Well, that's a lot. That's more than the top three <laughs> national banks combined. Easily find one near you with the Chime app. Send and receive money. Pay friends through Chime, no matter what bank account they use, and cash out your money fee free. Start building your credit up. Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash SK. SK. That's Chime.com slash SK. SK. Sorry about that frumble at the end. I was like, That's wait a right, minute. That's all right, You're an international rap superstar now. Quickly, uh, and I forgot to, I've been trying to shout out the Patreon faithful members who suggest stories. Forgive me if I don't do it. Fallon Noden, shout out to Cindy Crawford. Ashley Hotchkiss was the Cardi B suggestion. Many people say it, but I want to at least shout out the people. Fallon, Ashley, thank y'all. Yeah. Now, Sade B says, can we talk about the woman throwing these expensive bras on Drake's stage? Like, these are expensive bras. They can't fit no more. Are they going out to buy them specifically to toss? Are they taking a worn bra off? Uh, CJ Williams said, this a, this, a 36G bra has to be at least $50 regular price. It's a lot of material. So Drake has been getting. They've been throwing stuff at this man. 
these things, I don't think this is not the same as getting water thrown on him. No, he's picking up these bra. He's learning. I, I'm learning. What have I think you he, learned? I didn't know they went to L. Oh. He, he, he had oh, like a 36 go, yeah, L. Yeah, they go up there. I didn't know. I thought it was, I think, I didn't, I just didn't know. D, double D, G. I, has Kanisha ever said what size bra she wears? <laughs> she ain't told me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That never, you said, well, I don't know if she's ever said. Right. You know, she ain't, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I know she's, uh, I'm only asking that because I know she's not like a, a shy person about her having a large bosom. She, mm-hmm. she won't show them titties. Those ain't no double D's. There's some there's some extra letters. Extra letters. Yeah, on them. I didn't know. I haven't really had a reason to go and. But to you Loma. see these women that have two little people hanging from their <laughs> neck. But I and never you thought. Oh, I, that's probably an F. No. I, I what I thought there was like pants. I thought it was like 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, yep, that's it. 48, whatever. I exactly. didn't know. I don't know. They're like more like suits. 36 wide long no you had it right with pants because you know the waist goes as well as the the leg goes okay okay so, so the rib this area goes as well as them titties and so you the way you could be uh uh fat and short right and have like a 42 28 mm-hmm. you could also be tall and thin have a 30 36 uh-huh I wasn't aware of the pants is a good analogy. Yeah. So titties and bras and pants more closely than we realize. So there are some girls that are extremely thin that have gigantic breasts. Yeah. And there are women that are like that are big backed and they don't have larger breasts. It can go any way that you want it to go. But these broads, regardless, are like, I'm giving him a bra. Now, first of all, this is tell us all the time. People have been throwing panties and other They've been throwing panties and bras on stage since the beginning of time. I'm sure Marvin Gaye threw- could have started a Victoria's Secret I'm back sure in the day. I'm sure David, in the Bible, oh, yeah. had some burlap, you know, bo- I don't know what the draws yeah. was then. They but weren't I- wearing I'm no sure, draws. I'm sure Marvin Gaye was like, what's going on? You know? <laughs> Josh? Why is it okay when he does it? Lock in. That was a good one. Come on, man. I bet Dave was on that harm that blinked it. They blinked it. Somebody threw them burlap <laughs> thong at him. He was like, girl, this material is harsh they on a coochie. They were not wearing no draws. Well, what'd they throw? They got to throw something. I don't know. Maybe their teeth. You know, they... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if I had some draws, David, you know I would have thrown They would just throw the waft of their stuff. And smack him in his face. Because I know them things was smelling. I know it smelled crazy in that Old Testament. When you can see the smell, you know. (laughs) The the smell just slowly (laughs) traveling to his face and smack him. Like Ray (laughs) LePew in those whole cartoons. It just like wafts and David was like, whoo. Listen. Y'all smoking up in here. (laughs) Sprinkle some myrrh on it. Hey, what the hell about? Oh my god. You need somebody but actually probably did that that back in the day, that's pheromone coochie. I know. That I, gets to the no. animalistic nature of man. Pheromones aren't supposed to smell though. No, they but they can. Like if nobody taking a shower ever. That's the that's the smell. Then he probably like, who girl? Mm. Yeah. You got that regular. You got that unleaded coochie. Ah! <laughs> god. It's just the that's, worst. That, hey, that's of. that's the animalistic nature of man. It, it, you, it, it ain't been washed. You remember Monterey Jack on uh Yes, yes <laughs> on uh Jim and Dale? Uh, yes. Like Tom and Jerry. Woo 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 woo. He just probably like Oh, they got that ceramic. And that's what I was wondering about the Drake thing. Are they taking a bra off and yes, throwing this? They're not warm? just bringing in an extra bra? I think it's both. That can't fit in a clear, a little clear bag. <laughs> That's a good point. I think it's both. They might be wearing because them girls with the big, big titties, you can't go very long without a bra. They you, might might be doubled up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Them big titties, if they, especially if it's early on the concert, and they still gonna be vibing. They're not. It's, they're not gonna have a good time. It's gotta be a lot of strain on the lower lumbar if you it think is. about it. And Drake is it stopping is. for like five to ten minutes to, to be talk like about the bras, man. 36L, find this woman immediately. <laughs> Listen, the reason why I can't th- throw off my bra at no concert is that it doubles as my purse. Okay? 
So that means you getting my keys because you already know this is going to be down in there. Lip gloss going to be down in there. You okay. got to make sure all that's out. Cell phone down in oh, there. I can charge your battery if you throw oh, it all over my match. money. Uh, there's going to be so much in there. So I best be throwing away a lot. And don't let it be like a big, big titty girl. She can hide things in it. I can't give you this bra. Because I, now I got to hold all my now, shit. Now I got my keys Now I got the whole, who got a fanny pack? Because I gave up my purse. You put a wine to, bottle under there. I'm about to put my phone in, in my drawers. Yeah, listen. Took it under my balls. What's the worst <laughs> is that I always used to put money in my bra. Always. Because I wouldn't like have my purse on me. What's the worst is at the end of the day, and you got nickels and quarters stuck to your titties and you done forgot like I, I be having quarters <laughs> underneath my tit I be having pennies <laughs> everywhere and they just be falling uh, hitting the floor that is the worst y'all don't know nothing about that life but I'm telling you women be using they mm. they they braziers listen when I worked uh at Bank of America in this one of my worst uh, experience one of my many bad experiences and they actually had to do a memo about this in the summertime women would open bank accounts and they would have you have to put like a hundred dollars in 25 to a hundred dollars to open your account mm -hmm. and it'd be hot outside you and wet money. they would pull it out of there and I'm talking about one lady pulled it out of her bra white woman pulled it out of her bra and whoosh, and it made that sound mm. when it hit my desk. I would have passed out. I was like. I've been like, we can't take that. That's counterfeit. <laughs> and I was like, and they had to do a memo to to the people. They're like, hey, <laughs> put these signs on the door of the bank. Hey, it's really hot outside. So please don't remove money from your bra to pass to our workers because it's sweaty. You going to get this sweaty money. I used to put money in my bra because I was always afraid of getting uh, pickpocketed. I was always afraid somebody was going to steal my money. <laughs> that was a real fear. And it's going to take a long time to get your bra. Oh, if you if you tussling with me up there. <laughs> Angel, now you fighting back now, Angel. Oh, yeah. Now you in close contact. I'm going to bite you. <laughs> you going to hip check them like you oh, did Cindy Crawford. Oh, hell yeah. Ah! I got three, $23. Get out of here. Yes. Scram, you. <laughs> Listen, I mean, now I don't really carry cash. So I don't have to worry about it. But sometimes them credit cards be up there. I be having the imprint of my credit card number stuck onto my chest. <laughs> and where it's been mashed in there all day. I be like, read the C CCV code off of my titty. <laughs> What's the CCV code? <laughs> what it say? 8639. American Express, they got four numbers. They got them four numbers on front. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, you're going to get this hot, sweaty ass money. That's diddy dirty money. Yeah. Yeah. I know somebody's like, oh, I never put money in there because it's dirty. I was like, yeah. But at that time I was like, who's about to be rubbing on my, like nursing from my titties. I stopped doing and that. And it's on the head. outside. On the outside of the, the money. Place. It ain't inside your body. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's, yeah. money to skin. If you touching it with your fingers, your fingers, you touch your face with my titties yeah. stay in place. They don't <laughs> we be used interrupted. to have strippers come in. Where? Uh, to the bank. Oh, okay. Oh I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, where we you still were on the bank. Still like, the not bank. here. Come in off the bank in in uniform. Oh, in the thongs. It's it's safe. Not right? thongs, it's but a lot like, of money they be moving around. They would have hoodie over the you know what I'm saying uh -huh. regular stuff, and they would, and I'd be like, you actually open it. Uh, you could deposit it over there. They're like, oh, and strippers be paid. Oh, as they should. What it's cash? As they what? should. It's a lot of wash money, but it is. Oh, they're playing my song. Uh, Darius Dixon, uh, he texted me yesterday. He's like, they're playing your song at the strip club. I was like, thank you. That's a great strip club song. It is. I'd imagine. And you know, strip clubs, they don't want songs that are less than three minutes long. I found that out being a rapper. Really? Yeah, because lap dances. They pay for the dances? Oh, Yeah, lap dances have to be th three minutes mm. at least. So the a song, they want songs to be at least three minutes so that... It is. So boom, my rig is, is clocks in at what? The remix uh, clocks in at three, right at three. Perfect. Yeah. We need to keep this in mind. We made the Unruly Cousins album. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, this story and this this why I appreciate the Patreon uh, faithful members. I didn't see this anywhere. Tate D suggested this. Did you know this plastic surgeon in Ohio lost her medical she license sure because she was live streaming? Her operations oh, on TikTok. While answering okay. questions. While answer, listen, mm -hmm. let me read y'all the article. 
An Ohio yeah. plastic surgeon who live streams some patients' operations on TikTok had three patients report complications after surgery has had her state medical license revoked permanently Wednesday, according to the state's medical board. Dr. Catherine Roxanne Graw, also known on social media as Dr. Roxy, will no longer be able to practice medicine in the state of Ohio, spokesperson said. In addition to revoking her license, it's going to be fined $4,500. CNN saw a comment from the rep attorney representing Graw, blah, blah, blah. Let me read you the other part. She says she made social media videos because she wanted, she loved teaching and wanted to explain cosmetic surgery to people outside of the field, according to the Times. But as I stand here today, this is her, I see how many of those videos appeared silly and unprofessional. Mm -hmm. She interacted with TikTok users during surgeries, report says. In one letter dated, dated October 9th, 2018, yeah. the board told her she needed to maintain patient privacy when sharing photos or videos of her patients. Medical procedures on social media nearly three years later, the board sent her another letter outlining additional concern. The article had multifactual issues with the care of her patients, including concerns regarding the lack of informed consent, ethical concerns related to privacy and social media, and unavo an avoidable complications that required surgical revision. So, I <laughs> So are they saying that there were a couple people that she did the live surgery on that had complications? Or yes. are they saying just in general she had They said she did some of the people that she was doing the live surgeries on had to have revision revisions. Uh huh. They said she was uh hold on. Yes, yes. The letter basically said while she was live during my surgery, <clears throat> she messed up. Mm -hmm. And had to go back and fix her mistake. Oh, no. See, no. There are so many things wrong with this. The consent is a big one. I, I can't believe that she wouldn't get consent before. That seems crazy. Can you imagine waking up from a surgery and somebody sending you a TikTok and your doctor's like, right? I'm like a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, gang, Scalpel gang, so gang, good. Gang, gang. Scalpel so good. <laughs> Thank you for the heart. Like, or oh, we done took this silicone out. Boy, this is a baby. We gonna now we gonna put this one in. Yeah, now for t tonight, I'm going to bubble. Why? Why are you doing this while while I'm unconscious? Especially because I just did my first TikTok live yesterday. I didn't know how TikTok lives worked at all. Mm. And I, you know, when people all of a sudden have like a, a elephant nose yes. and stuff, I didn't know what was happening in those. And so Victory had to explain to me. That's when people are like sending you money and gifts to that make things 43. show up. Hey, get this off of me. Listen, no, I have luckily found out beforehand, but th think about how dumb that looks. The person is doing surgery on you. <laughs> then all of a sudden, they turn into a fucking elephant. Or, and you know how sometimes you can't tell who the camera's supposed to be on? What if the elephant shows up on you, the patient? While you're getting a BBL. While you over there just, because you know, sometimes your breast and your navel look like a face. They'd have made you into a cowgirl. The crazy thing is, I, listen, call me crazy. Call me crazy. I would think if you open up somebody's human body, mm -hmm. you might want to pay attention to what you're doing I would think while so. their body has a slice in it. I would think if so. you're going to be adding titty meat, removing, removing titty meat, adding booty meat, liposuction. These are the things that she was doing. She was doing BBLs. Uh, she performed surgeries on the breast, abdomen, thighs, arms, and buttocks mm -mm. and BBLs. She, she, the arm thing while I'm <laughs> unconscious, thing. you know what I'm talking about? Brachial, <laughs> brachial otomy, I believe Come on, brachial otomy. <laughs> Bra I don't know what it's called, but I love it. Go ahead. While I'm unconscious, you are at, you are on TikTok. First of all, I don't even really I don't want your phone on right in no the operating room. No distractions. Plastic surgery is still a major surgery. But we gotta understand, we just could see the stupid she's doing. These surgeons don't care. True, but at least you don't know. <laughs> you wake up, they could have been practicing whatever. Her mistake is recording it, period. But recording is not enough. She was live streaming. She was live streaming. So this is where I'm like double-edged sword. A part of me is like, well, yeah, live stream it. So if you mess up, there's already proof out there. You're going to pay me, right? 
Where these other doctors, you don't find out until well after the fact, and you have to go to another doctor to find out, yes. oh, there, there's a puncture or there's a scalpel still inside your titty. That's the reason why you over here and you don't have no feeling in your left arm. <laughs> Can you imagine watching a TikTok live <laughs> and the doctor performing a surgery and she's like, oh, uh, I got to cut this off. Because <laughs> you got to take the glove off to cut the live oh, off. Oh, absolutely. Like you really got to... Sleep. All right. Go live. Beep, beep. <laughs> Do you re scrub? Are you going live before you scrub oh, in? No, no. Is somebody it's, else starting the camera for you? Th listen, plastic surgery is not as sterile as a rig. This is not open heart. <laughs> they are not sterile like that. They be <laughs> taking bites of their sandwich. <laughs> All right, let's move that nipple up. That, <laughs> that uh, give me my sprite. It is not as sterile as no open heart or no uh, any of these other major sur mm -hmm. uh, surgeries, uh, uh, cesarean or anything like that. What I will say is, um, I think if she could have either gotten one, not either one, gotten permission from the patients and then not did questions during. <laughs> I think those two will be fine because we can watch surgeries online all the time. That's not anything new. Yeah, it's the interaction that makes it seem like you're not paying yes, attention. Yes, it's just like, no. Like, yeah. I don't, and then what if you start, if there's a beef happening between you and somebody on right. the thing and you getting angry and you aggressive with me. You got the scalpel, you like, yeah. it could be whatever. Ah! <laughs> this yelling about, no, all uh, black lives matter, not all lives matter. I would be like, it, I don't care what that person thinks. I do not care. Puffy, focus. Puffy, Puffy, I need you to focus on this human uh, body that's open right now. And then what do you do if a patient dies while you're live streaming? Uh, better ask for gifts. <laughs> Please. How you play that off? If you, if we all sudden hear, boop. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, guys. So that's the machine. It's acting up. Uh, we're going to take a five. And oh uh, hopefully this patient has policy genius. <laughs> <laughs> because ah! let me tell you it's important to have insurance uh especially mm. when you're having surgery and whatnot and you have loved ones that depend on you financially if you have a family like i do you know how much your loved ones depend on you and in the worst case scenario you wouldn't want them to worry about money a good life insurance plan can give you the peace of mind that if something happens to you your family will have the safety net to cover mortgage payments college costs and other expenses so that they can get back on their feet and focus on what matters most so i have life insurance i actually use policy genius to get my life insurance um if anything were to happen to me angel lakita moore the international rap star podcast host actress comedian my my house will be paid off. My kids' school will be taken care of, and they can continue life sad without me, but not broke at least. Um, that is something that became really important to me, especially as I moved into different phases of my career. And I was just like, to maintain the life that we've created is not one that would be easily done if I am not here um, to help with the financial needs of my family. So I didn't want that life already. Their life is going to drastically change. If I weren't here, same thing with my husband, we got a policy for him to make sure if anything happens, this house gets paid off. My kids will be able to still go to school. These are things that are important. And even if you don't have a family that, that, uh, or kids or a husband, you still want to make sure that you don't leave the, your family with the burden of figuring out how to take care of the things that you left here on this earth that need to be taken care of. So, uh, Policy Genius knows how valuable your li your time is. That's why their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes with America's top insurers in just a few clicks. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just twenty five dollars a month for a dollar. Uh, excuse me, for one million dollars of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed award winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find it and buy it. Head to policygenius.com or click on the link in the description to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Dot com. Sing it. And again, the reason she got in trouble is because she did not have these patients consent mm. and she was interacting with users during yeah. their... 
surgery. That's what I said. If she could have removed those two, listen, my doctor was like, can we do before and after pictures? I said, absolutely not. You'll have to have those in your mind. I said, no, I don't want my titties on your website. These are my titties. Not for anybody else to see. Nope. For this is not even during surgery. <laughs> no. No. Nope. I don't know why you phrasing it that way. These are my titties. These okay? are my titties. I paid. I paid cash you for pay these cash titties. You paid cash money. Listen, you no. didn't go down to Klarna. Nothing uh, wrong with Klarna. Oh, uh, listen. But you went down to Klarna. I didn't go to do credit care. I said <laughs> I didn't pay for these titties in full. No. No. You basically that's a nude you got of me. Yeah. You could revenge nude you. Listen, and now that I'm a revenge rapper, he could have done sold them down to TMZ. These is angel titties. <laughs> no. No. They got credit card marks on them. <laughs> Two thousand quarters stuck to it. <laughs> now, that's how people gonna know. No, them definitely angels. Titties. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that big old nickel on a nipple. <laughs> uh, all right. Next topic: Angelina Briscoe. Shout out to faithful members. That yes, Asian Angelina. man who paid fourteen thousand dollars to become a collie. Did you see that? I did see. First of all, that costume was lit. Second it of all, was freakishly good. Oh, yeah. Look. It was like, I was like, hold on. I mean, obviously, it's a humongous dog. Yeah. But I was like, at first glance, I was like, where is his head? Where is his? How big is he? Yeah. Because I can't tell if he's a small man. I, obviously, the hands part kind of gives yeah. it up because you see like the cuff and stuff. Uh -huh. But the dog face part, if I were walking down the street, and I'm just like, you know, have my headphones in. I wouldn't immediately notice. Oh, Lottie know there was would have a man. tried to get that dog pregnant. Granted, she is a girl dog. Lottie would have been like, let me put some in you. Would not have known that this was a man. You know, not only is the costume lit, this man is full blown crazy. 14,000 people got money. Mm -hmm. And his, he said it was his dream to become an animal. And he spent 14,000 USD to achieve his dream and the company makes like uh they're like make costumes for like movies and stuff mm -hmm. and you know so they did an outstanding job oh they did an amazing job i saw the close-up of it and i was like wow yeah. this is but what is wrong with him is when what i first I saw know. that video angel the black parent in me jumped out i said get your butt off that dog on ground get off the floor walking on your hands I, People done peed and spit on the street. I, I, why does he want to be a dog, though, Kevin? Is there an animal that you would want to be that bad? I want. I like dogs for doggy style. It's my favorite style. Wow. It's a great style. But would you want to be doing doggy style dressed up as a pit bull? Uh, first thing, let me tell you what I have a problem with. It seems like it would be sweltering. Oh, and absolutely. It. He's going to die in there. The thought of having all that costume plus fur on all the time is enough for me to never do that. I hate being hot. I'm hot right now. The AC ain't blowing like it should in here. <laughs> so no, I couldn't do that. If I were to be an animal, I would be uh, probably a brolic kangaroo. Why does it have to be brolic? Because I all? love I love those prison the ones that prison push up <laughs> just look like they want all the smoke kangaroos. I want to be in Australia walking around regular, not hopping, walking regular as a fully brolic kangaroo. Yeah, like that's Dana. a costume that, that could be made in people. thousand percent completely. Believe. Did you see that? You remember that video of that guy, the kangaroo had that guy's dog and he walked up and punched it in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you never saw that. No. You didn't see that. I don't. Did you see so. it, Josh? I've only no. seen kangaroos fighting. I don't You've never I, seen the guy punching the. Oh my god! He punched Angel, the kangaroo. He, the, the, the kangaroo had his dog. He walked up, squared up with a kangaroo, and and he socked it in the face. And the and kangaroo, then, and what then, the kangaroo do? Let his dog go. <gasps> oh no! It's I'm fine. Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's from Timu, and I haven't figured out how to set it up. Watch this. The table got his dog in a headlock. Watch him sock it. Oh, this said, ah! It was so, he had already let the dog go and he was like, pow, that's what having my dog in a headlock. Well, because I, I mean, I feel like he probably thought, well, if I turn my back on you, you might oh, yeah. pounce on my back. 
And apparently, the way kangaroos hurt you, they have a uh, really sharp claws. Yeah. I so know. I was watching the like kangaroo expert. I was fully into this when this came out, and he's like, he has a thing in a headlock. So and when he jumps, he tried to stab, but he missed the dog. So he was going to try and kick stab, and that's why the dude was like. And the kangaroo was like, hey! And then he just walked off. Thank God. Because if that kangaroo would have been like, <laughs> you and the dog going to be dead. <laughs> he would have admitted it if that kangaroo was Bruce Lee. <laughs> if he would have turned around and wiped the spit off the side of his mouth or blood. That was the best thing Bruce Lee ever did. Somehow getting punched and enjoying it was more terrifying than beating somebody up. I think people think they can do that in real life. I Listen, <laughs> when I was a little kid, I had seen that. And I was like, I'm going to do this. Because I used to get in fights all the time. And this kid punched me. And I and I went to do it. And my jaw just clicked. And I was like, ah. You know, you get punched hard. And I was just like. And I wasn't bleeding. So I couldn't do either thing. And it hurt way more right. than it looked like Bruce Lee's hurt. I was just like. All right, I don't want to do this anymore. Listen, certain pain <laughs> causes me instant tears, even if I'm not crying. You know what I'm saying? So you get hit in the nose. Oh, it's automatic. You automatic tears. tears. It's connected. Nose and tears. <laughs> Jamie so Fox what you going to do then? <laughs> you don't mess up now. You don't mess up now. And I'm not crying because I'm scared. I'm crying because I'm really so mad. And my voice does this. It does this all the time. <laughs> you really <laughs> get ready to meet your demise. You really messed up now. Does somebody have some tissues? <laughs> yeah. I, uh 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 uh. That's so <laughs> I don't know why That's people so think they funny. can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, you I remember so I was working at a goddamn so on. much trouble. What is the place that I worked? I worked at a community center and a kid accidentally hit me in the face with a ball. It hit me right here on the nose. And you can't you can't cry in front of hood kids. Because you're not coming back. Right. But there was nothing I could do with the tears. I was like, I am so angry right now. I was like, huh? They were like, Miss Adrian, you okay? I was like, yes. Trying my best. I was like, tears, y'all better not. Them tears were just building up on my fingernails because them tears were like, oh, no, we're coming. You got hit in the nose. We've got to come out. Did you cry? Oh, the tears. The, I, I didn't like, uh cry, but the tears, I could not stop them. And people ask you, are you good? You good? Yes, yes. Yeah. Go. <laughs> Go sit in the corner. <laughs> to pull myself together. One time I was having a pretty tense business conversation. Mm -hmm. I had to tell somebody about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm an angry crier. Right, but I, I am more pissed than anything. Uh -huh. Angel, lost all my leverage. Oh, no, Kevin. <laughs> my voice cracked. <laughs> in, the, in the tenseness of the conversation, Kevin, no. I was like, first of all, you don't understand <clears throat> what I've lost. Oh, I've been like, pause. <laughs> it's over. Take, I want to leave now. Let's take a five minute break <clears throat> so you can get yourself together. <laughs> you really have made a big mistake, buddy. I'm going to leave now. Angel, I was so embarrassed. I went in my car like, now, throw, why would you him? Because I was pissed beyond pissivity. And my body was like, you a little hurt too, aren't you? Uh, no. Uh, Dang it. You got to be like, I'm having an allergic reaction. Let me go get my EpiPen in the car. That's what you got. You can't, you can't just dive out the meeting without an excuse. Angel. It was oh. the absolute worst. Oh, I didn't know you were angry. angry oh fire, my Kevin. god! I'm, I'm so if glad I'm I've never very made you that angry. since I was a little kid, I used to be so mad. Like, why am I crying? Oh, it pisses you off <laughs> that it's just, happening. I'm not connected to because I'm pissed. I'm more pissed than anything. Oh. But somehow my body's like, hey, you don't really like what's happening right now. I'm like, get, yeah! get back in here. I'm so glad I've never made you that angry. And if that did happen, we both would be laughing soon after. I'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, friend. I'm sorry. Whatever oh, it is. Oh, friend. I'm like, just hug it out. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Whatever I did, I'll fix it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and you're leaving. I'm like, no. I see the tears. Here, let me get but you. But the thing about being an angry crier is like you really are mad. I know. And it, your body betrays you because it it feels like your brain connected the wrong emotion. Like, yeah. I want to be gritting my teeth. It's like, man, throw some tears down and crack his voice. What? 
you know, it's the voice crack I that can't really do ruins that it. right now. This is a very tense discussion. We talk about thousands of dollars. If I crack my voice, everybody heard it. Uh-huh. Everybody knew That's it. Nobody it. acknowledged it. I paused. Oh, I'm having a uh, I must have ate some peanuts. <laughs> you got to blame it on something else. It's just like. So what I was saying was this, Jack. <laughs> Let me tell you what. The deal's net closing well, if, no you more. You know what? Next time, if that ever happens, just go all the way in. Oh, yeah. You have to. Just go ahead and let the tears go. In. Go. No, go no. all the way in that way. <laughs> I just don't understand. I'm so mad at you. Absolutely not, I'm Angel. I'm so mad. I would rather move to New Mexico. <laughs> I'd rather move to Clovis, New Mexico <laughs> and live out the rest of my life. Than to just cry. Than to just cry. I don't want to cry, nigga. I'm a thug. I know, but thugs cry. Nah, they don't, but they don't do it like right then. No. You know what's funny about thugs? One of my boys is a full on crip. Mm -hmm. In jail at this moment. Oh, bless his heart. This nigga is the most expressive, vulnerable, loving. I mean, his Instagram captions be. I'm talking about pure, unadulterated love. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but it's crip lang- lingo. Yeah, but it is thug behavior, and I'm like, nigga, you are. This is beautifully. This is touching. But that nigga keep that thing on him will rob you. Did did crimes. Did the crime. But that nigga is for real a lover and a fighter, and he'll knock another out. So why don't you allow yourself to be that three-dimensional? Be the boss that cries when people mess up. Why? Angel, we said nine. It is not 20. Respect my time. And I would be like, I'm so sorry, Kevin. Yeah, what if I had to fire people and I couldn't retain my emotions? It'd be okay. It'd be okay. That's funny. You All so right. That's funny. It's really funny. All right, we gotta go bald and a brotherful. Bald Coming and a beautiful. Back, live on Patreon. Listen, join our Patreon. It's a growing, beautiful community. It is. Um, I love it. We're. I'm low key chewing on the idea of a stage con. Chewing. Somebody asked me that. They were like, "Is Cruella happening?" I ain't I gonna said, be called that. Know. Somebody said that you get sued if you call it Cruella. Thought that was a great name idea, but true. somebody was like, Absolutely. "DJ Envy already got sued for some Cella he put." They Cellas uh, Co- are not. They'll let that you, you sell all do. the tickets and be like, "All right, yeah. run all that." Apparently, Coachella is exactly what they do. Mm-hmm. They gonna let you sell your oh, tickets. Yeah. And be like, "Ooh, you did a great job." Give me that money. I think Con is safe though. Oh yeah, everybody you do uses Crew Con, con mm-hmm. Stage Con, whatever the title. Convicts too. They use that. I'm chewing on the idea. I am. I don't know. And DreamCon was a massive success. It looks so fun. I oh had a my bit of God. Fun. Did you go? I didn't go. I was about to say, because you're supposed to take my child. Yeah, I didn't go. I couldn't go. I, and I, re- I wanted to. They, the RDC boys didn't offer me tickets, and I could not make it. We were choosing our wedding venue, and my yeah. parents were here. It was a whole thing. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm chewing on that idea. I don't know when or where, but just know I'm chewing. And I can chew for years. It's true. Uh so anyway, love you guys. Uh, we will see you in a few minutes on Patreon for the Bald and Beautiful. And then Angel and I will figure out how to do, when we'll do the bonus. Likely, are you? Thursday. 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 All right. All right, we'll see y'all. Goodbye. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Here's another banger for you. Here's another one. Here's another banger for you. Here's another one. Here's another banger for you. Here's another banger for you. Here's another banger for you. With my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.